So finally, we're going to take a look at 13.4, and there are just a couple of definitions that I want us to work through for section 13.4. The first definition is that of a unit tangent vector. So when I say unit tangent vector, what would come to mind? Well, I would want a vector that was tangent, and when it says unit, that means that I want it to be exactly one unit in length. So we've already talked about our tangent vector before. Our tangent vector is our derivative vector. The derivative vector will not necessarily be one unit in length. As we saw previously, depending upon the parameterization, certain parameterizations are going to have different lengths or variable distances that a particle travels depending upon the, uh, the parameterization. So to ensure that we have a unit tangent vector, we're going to take the tangent vector and then we divide by the length of the tangent vector. So what's the, the length of the tangent vector is going to be the magnitude of that vector. And that's the definition of unit tangent vector. Our next definition is the unit normal vector. And again, we want it to be one unit in length. And our unit normal vector is the derivative of our unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So this is something that's guaranteed to be one unit in length because we took this vector, which might not be one unit in length, but we divided it by its length. So if it was three inches long and then we divided everything by three, that'll shrink it down to being one unit in length. And then the final thing that we want to talk about is curvature. And this is our intuitive definition. So intuitively, curvature, denoted kappa of s, is equal to the magnitude of the derivative of our tangent vector with respect to s. Notice that s here means that it's arc length, that it's a, a arc length parameterization. So one unit of distance is equal to one unit of time. Um, before I draw a picture of that, I'm going to show the definition briefly of how that's computed. When we compute it in real life, we have to take into account that not all parameterizations are arc length parameterizations. So curvature is defined as the magnitude of our unit tangent vector, the derivative of our unit tangent vector function divided by the magnitude of our derivative function. So I'll, let's draw some pictures of this. Let's look at, I guess here we have here, let's look at some geometry. And maybe I'm going to do my geometry on the same sheet. So let's say that we have some vector valued function tracing out a path given by R of t. Recall that means that we have a, this collection of vectors that are tracing out tips. And this need not be an arc length parameterization. So it might move really slowly through here and then really quickly here. So each arrow is representing one unit of time as I travel along this crazy hillside. What does our unit tangent vector? Like we talked about in the previous section, our derivative function is going to be exactly tangent to this curve. So this is supposed to represent something that's exactly tangent. And I'm going to take that and shrink it down so that it's exactly one unit in length. So my unit tangent vector t of t is a tangent vector. One unit in length. What's our unit normal vector? Oh, maybe this is a bad example because I want to show that it's exactly, let's use this arrow right here. Here, our unit tangent vector is going to be exactly tangent to this path, one unit in length. And our unit normal vector is exactly perpendicular to our unit tangent vector. I'll write that definition down. So unit normal vector n of t is normal to 
or perpendicular to, because normal is just a fancy word for perpendicular to our unit tangent vector. And actually, I drew this pointing the wrong direction. It's always going to point in the direction that my particle is tending towards. It was a little flat there, but it's always going to point to the inside of a circle. So our unit normal vectors would be pointing in towards the inside of this circle through here. Our unit normal vectors get close to zero through here. Or sorry, they're always one unit in length. So through here, maybe they're going this way. And then through here, they're turning and pointing this way. Those are unit normal vectors. They're perpendicular to our unit tangent vectors, and they're one unit in length. What's curvature? Unlike the other two vectors, curvature is not a vector. Curvature is a single number, because this is just some magnitude. And it says, how curvy is the path? EY is the path. And high values mean tightly curved. You can't see any of this, can you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm left-handed. Tightly curved. Really what it's measuring, if I think of it as the rate of change of my unit tangent vector with respect to time. So here, where it's not curved very much, my unit tangent vectors look really, really similar to one another, right? Because I'm not turning very much. Whereas maybe if over here, where I curve a lot, my tangent vectors are going to be changing direction really rapidly as I move along this curve. So intuitively, my curvature is saying, how fast is my unit tangent vector changing direction as I move along the curve, um, the length of the curve? And it can be computed like this. So now that I've talked through some pictures for each of these three, three things, let's go ahead and do an example. So let's say that I have a function, r of t, is equal to cosine t, sine t, t. This is our classic helix. And I want to compute the unit tangent vector. To do so, I know that I'm going to need to compute a bunch of back work. So I'm going to try to keep myself organized by writing out a list of steps first and then going back to compute my values. So first, my derivative function, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of t. The derivative of sine is cosine of t and the derivative of t is 1. So that means that the magnitude of r prime of t is given by the square root of negative sine squared plus cosine squared plus 1. Negative sine squared is sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So this is my trig identity again, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So I end up with 1 plus 1, which is square root 2. So that means that my unit tangent vector, t of t, which is equal to r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t, is equal to, in this case, r prime of t is written here, and the magnitude of r prime of t is written here. And I'm going to combine it all into one vector to look like negative 1 over square root 2 sine t, comma, 1 over square root 2 cosine t, comma, 1 over square root 2. So I took this square root 2, which is in the denominator, and divided it, or, and multiplied it through. So that's our unit tangent vector. Next, we're going to compute our unit normal vector. So my preliminary work, the derivative of this function, the derivative of my unit tangent vector, is given by the derivative of this function. The derivative of sine is cosine. So I get negative 1 over square root 2 cosine t. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I get negative 1 over square root 2 
sine t, and the derivative of 1 over square root 2 is just 0. So what is the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector? That's going to be the square root of this first component squared, which is negative 1 over square root 2 cosine t all squared plus negative 1 over square root 2 sine t all squared plus 0 squared, which is just 0. So that's going to be equal to, I'll write that down here. Let's see, I need to square my coefficient. And so that squared becomes 1 half cosine squared t plus 1 half sine squared t. I could use my trig sub again because and add these two together. Well, I factor out the 1 half, and I end up with square root of 1 half, which I can rewrite as 1 over square root 2 if I feel like it. So that means that our unit normal vector, which is given by t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t, that's going to be equal to what's t prime of t? It's all of this messy stuff. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and write it out. These fractions are things that you want to be careful with and you don't want to, uh, maybe I don't want to do it in my head necessarily because I might make an error. Um, divided by, what's the magnitude? 1 over square root 2. So if I have this divided by this, I can multiply top and bottom both by square root 2 or invert and multiply is maybe the mnemonic that you're more comfortable with. And that means that these square root 2s actually cancel out with one another. Because I have a 1 over square root 2 coefficient here divided by 1 over square root 2. And I end up with minus cosine t. I have negative 1 over square root 2 divided by square root 2. I get minus sine t and 0. So this is a vector 1 unit in length. I've just computed my unit normal vector. Finally, I'm going to compute my curvature. k of t is given by the magnitude of t prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. And I can just use the work that I did previously. The magnitude of t prime we found was 1 over square root 2. And the magnitude of r prime, I'm going to have to look back at this work and we find, aha, the magnitude of r prime was square root 2. So what's 1 over square root 2 divided by square root 2? I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by square root 2 over square root 2 to get rid of the messy denominator. Maybe this isn't really how you would think about doing it, but this is what I'm going to do. So that means the top becomes square root 2 times 1 over square root 2, which is just 1. And the bottom becomes square root 2 times square root 2, which is 2. So my curvature in this case is 1 half. Oh gosh, oh no, you can't see that. So this is what I did. Um, square root 2 over square root 2, this is just my clever version of 1. I'm trying to simplify this fraction, and I end up with the fraction 1 half.